Yes, sir, we are. Hey, good morning, good morning. What's happening? Good morning. Good morning. How are we doing? Great. Awesome, awesome, awesome. Welcome, everybody. Welcome. Hi. Hi. How are you? Good. Welcome. This is really exciting. I'm excited for you guys. We got a couple guys back here today, right, Matt? How you doing? Good to see you, right? Good to see you. Good to see you again, guys. We didn't even force these guys. How about that? <laughs> First of all, I want to welcome all of you, and I want to congratulate you for taking this step. As these guys can contest, this is going to be a four-day training for you guys. It's literally going to change your life if you allow it to. If you allow it to. And today's actually my favorite day, and the reason why it's my favorite day is because as I've seen, as I walked in here, coming from a long trip from Sarasota on the road all morning, you guys were all waiting, and nobody was talking to each other, really, right? You guys were all looking at your phones, right? You know how it is. You, you, you've been through it. Yeah. Looking at your phones, no one knows each other, like, what's happening here, right? I apply for this car dealership job. I haven't even been in a car dealership yet, right, Orin? Of course. It's pretty, pr pretty weird, right? What's happening? I'm in this college. And now I'm going through this sales course to set myself up for success. That's what this is. So I want to congratulate you guys for taking this step. And I want you to realize that by the end of today, you guys are going to be practically all WhatsApp, like buddy partners, you know what I mean? <laughs> Everybody has that WhatsApp app. You guys are going to be going back and forth. Because a lot of you guys are going to be working together at the same dealership. Okay? You got to pass the class, though. We all know that, right? Yep. Yeah. We all know that. We all know we're clear on that. This is an exciting four days because you're about to embark on a career that is truly the best business you could ever be in. And I mean that sincerely. These guys can tell you when I say that, I mean that very sincerely. This is an incredible business. As, who's here has been in the car business before? Besides you two guys. Okay, Lex, right? Lex, where did you work? Hey, Alan, I'm Georgia. That's right, Georgia. We spoke, didn't we? Yep. Good. And you, uh, you've been there for a couple years, right? Mm -hmm. Good for you. I'll, I'll, I want to thank you for coming to this class because I was excited to have you in this class. We always like to have some experience in these four-day beginning sales training programs. Okay. This is really an advanced program. And you guys are going to learn so much over the next four days. And then really what we're going to do is we're going to obviously take the next step and go to the dealerships and start to work there. Where did you work? Land Rover. Land Rover. Which one? North Bay. North Dade, how long did you work there for? Four years. Good for you. Congratulations on coming here. So I'm glad to see you here. And how about anybody else? Kensky, where'd you work? Okay, good. You're taking a little trek down here, aren't you? Good for you, man. Transportation. Well, depends on the transportation business. What transportation business? I drove semi-truck, so licensed commercial driver. That's a pretty good business, isn't it? It is, but it's a dangerous one. Oh, it's dangerous, all right. I tell you. Last night, that's why I was in Sarasota, or yesterday, um, my niece was, a, was uh, stopped at a light, and a semi rammed into the back. Oh uh, it was a horrible accident. She's going to be okay, thank God. Um, but, you know, it is, it's, a, it's, a tough, it's a tough job, you know? You've got to pay attention when you're driving, that's for sure. How about you, Juan? Uh, I've been to a couple of local dealerships, Synergy Auto Deals, uh, yeah. the new ones, uh, just... You know where the auto mall of 421 is? Mm -hmm. uh, I just independently was uh, contracted with all of those dealers, so I was just bringing people in. Okay, so you're doing independent kind of stuff. Yeah. Cool. Awesome. Well, for a lot of you, this is your first time in the car business. This business can literally change your life if you allow it to. I mean that sincerely. It did for me 26 years ago. That's how long I've been in this business. But you got to understand, this business is a people business, isn't it? you got to treat people right, treat them with respect, give them what they want, and never lie to them and you can be successful. <coughs> the most successful people in this business all have one thing in common. What do you think that is, Kensky? Uh, honesty and integrity, I guess. Honesty and integrity, sure. That, that's for sure. How about you, Martin? What do you think? They're all being smart, I guess. They're all, okay, yeah, that's, that's part of it. Everyone, how about you, man? Uh, drive and a focus for a... Uh, drive and focus, money. right? They're all hungry. They want success. That's the key. We all want to have success. That's why we're in this business. Man, when I keep saying over and over that this business can change your life, it can. Okay, just so you know, I haven't met all of you. My name is Matt Wanner. I'm the president of Maximum Potential Institute. I started this business 26 years ago at a local dealership over here, King Motor Company. Still do business with them today. Great company. Some of you may even be working there. Okay, great company, great organization. But I started just where you guys are, Fred. Just where you are, Edwin. Same place. Hey, welcome to King Mitsubishi. My name's Matt. Yours? Excellent, Edwin. Nice Edwin, to meet you. Edwin, nice to meet you, Edwin. What brings Thank you in today? You. Looking for a new car. Looking for a new car? Yes. Great. We've come to the right place. We've got plenty of those. Perfect. Any particular model you're looking for? Uh, Four-door. I uh, like Acura. 
Acura model? Yes. Great, we got a good selection of Acura. Okay. Tell you what, let's find out what you're looking for and then we can go from there, fair enough? Perfect. Good, follow me. All right. Starting off right there with the customer, treating them right, right off the bat, building a rapport, right? So I want everybody to know that this, this next four days is gonna be very, quite a bit that you're gonna learn. I want you to take notes. Feel free to ask questions. In a few minutes, Al is gonna get up here and he's gonna start teaching us. This guy is the best in the business. Wait till you see him. He's super exciting, okay? And what you're gonna learn is you're gonna learn everything from the steps to the sale, how to overcome objections, how to actually ask for the business, and how to do it, right, Matt? You've been through this before? Of course. He knows, Terrence has been through this before. But it all starts with believing that you can do this. Now, I know you all came from, mostly came from different businesses, right? Ray, what, what kind of business were you in before? I was in the hotel business. Hotel business, hospitality? Yeah. Okay, what'd you do at the hotel? I was a concierge. Okay, cool. Very cool. How about you, John? Uh, manufacturing. Manufacturing? Yep. Very cool. Okay, Edwin, what business were you in? Hospitality as well. Hospitality? Yes. Okay. Uh, Lex, before the car business, what'd you do? IT. IT work. <coughs> a little different than uh, when yeah. IT work, isn't it? <laughs> right? How about you? How do I pronounce your name? Evanon. Evanon? Yes. Evanon, how about you? And I was in the construction business. Love it, man. That's what a business I was in before I got in the business, right? Digging ditches and running pipe. That's what I did. How about you, Martin? Restaurant. Mar restaurant business. Server? Uh, bartender, assistant manager. Okay, great. A lot of hours, isn't it? Tough. A lot of hours. A lot of hours, Especially right? Edwin, hospitality, ton of hours, a right? A lot of hard work. To make the money, up. Yeah, a lot of hours. How about you, Felipe? Hotel business. Hospitality? Right. Same thing. A lot of hospitality people do very well in this business, right? Ken, Steve, before that, what would you do? Mortgage broker, okay, yeah, you got a lot of sales experience, right? And you drove trucks. And I've also been in aviation. And aviation? What'd you do there? I'm here. Hi, welcome on board. Hey, there you go. <laughs> <laughs> well, she's got it already, right? I said it. She's got it, man. She's got it. How about you, Juan? Uh, I was in a warehouse. You were in a warehouse? Yes, sir. There you go. We just had a guy who went through the a class, worked in an overnight warehouse. I think it was Sam's Club. He worked from... Uh, like whatever it was, 12 o'clock in the morning, 8 o'clock in the morning. Yeah, he I used to work from 12 to all the way through the morning. There you go, and he would come yeah. to the class. He started in April, and I'll show you guys his paycheck from his July commission. July, he started in April. His July, no, sorry, August, August washout. His third month in the business, second real true month only selling cars, third month in the business. $13,671, was it? Damn. Commission. Good month. Good month. That's not bad, is it? I know. It could be better. What's that? It could be better. It could be better. I like this guy. You've got some drive, this guy. Okay? So what happens here, this is like Vegas. What happens here stays here. Okay? Don't be afraid to ask questions. We have a few rules, and Al's going to go over with you in a little bit, but don't be afraid to ask questions or give us a dumb answer. There's no such thing as a dumb answer. Okay? Even if you don't think you know the answer, you gotta give us that answer. Or hey, even if you think that John may think it's foolish, you gotta give us an answer, okay? Al's gonna go through all this stuff with you. But I want you guys to know that this is an exciting part for you. It's an exciting part of your lives. It really is. If you allow this business to change it, change your life, then your life will change from this day forward. 26 years ago, I, I remember when I, before I uh, walked into King Mitsubishi, I was married to a beautiful, beautiful little Latin girl. I still am, by the way, 27 years later. And uh, my wife, I was doing construction. My wife and I were pretty much newlyweds. We had a beautiful little baby girl. She was one month old. Her name was Allie. And it was June of 1992. I remember at that time, I was, like I said, digging ditches and running pipe, working for an electrical contracting company. And, just wasn't for me. It's a great business, and you can do really well in that business, but it just wasn't for me. You know, I wasn't making money. I don't even remember what I was making back then, maybe eight or 10 bucks an hour, whatever it was. My wife and I at that time were on welfare, and I'll never forget, we were right here on Caroline Road between Commercial and Atlantic Boulevard, and I was picking up food stamps from the WIC office with my wife. It's just true. By the way, any story that myself or I'll tell you, it's all true. Nothing fabricated or made up. And my wife, I took my wife over there. I wouldn't even get out of the car because uh, I was too embarrassed. My wife went out to get the car to the WIC office and she went to go pick up the food stamps. I'll never forget it because at that moment, something came over me that said, Matt, you need to change your life. You gotta figure this part out. You gotta get ahead of, you know, you got a daughter to feed now, you're married, you're supposed to be a responsible young man. And I'm over there 
on the food stamp line. So I said to myself, I'm gonna go change, man. I'm gonna do something. I don't know what I was gonna do. I had no idea what I was gonna do. But a few days later, I remember walking into King Mitsubishi and I ran into my first mentor. His name was Art Bell. Still friends with him today. Just texted him just on the way home back from Sarasota. And Art, can you shut up right here? Mm -hmm. And I'll, I'll never forget when I, uh, when I ran into Art because Art took a liking to me. And uh, Art, we couldn't be from two different places. He, was, he grew up in the swamps of Louisiana and I grew up in Staten Island, New York, right? So, um, how do I do this? Just shut off my computer. Oh, that's it? There you go. But he took a liking to me and he said to me this, which kind of changed my life forever. He says, Matt, he says, whatever happened in your past is irrelevant today. It doesn't matter. Whatever you believe that you can achieve, you will, if you believe it. He says, so I don't care about your past. He says, I don't care about your educational background. He says, you gotta be hungry. You gotta treat people right, treat them with respect, give them what they want, and never lie to people, and you'll be successful in this business. I said, well, I think I can do that, man. You know, I think I can do that, right? In fact, I know I can do that, Art. He says, okay. So I told him my story, I was very straight with him. Dropped out of high school in the 10th grade. Okay, I didn't make the right decisions when I was younger. I didn't, I grew up in a decent neighborhood with good parents, so it's not like I had any of that stuff going on, but that was just my decisions. I made bad decisions, right? So, but he hired me on the spot, man. He, he actually gave me a shot. He said, he says, I like you, so I want you to come back to work tomorrow. And I says, I can do that, okay? Just, I'm ready to go, I'm excited, okay? So I went home to my lovely wife, and I said, honey, guess what? I got a new job. You gotta remember the situation we're in. We're broke. Some of you may be in the same situation I well, I was. I don't know. Okay, but at that point we were financially broke. We weren't spiritually broke, or we mentally broke, or we you know relationally broke. No, but we were definitely financially broke at that time in our life. And I was 24 years old. And I said, "Honey, I got a job. I got a new job. I'm going to go work over at King Mitsubishi." She says, "Great. How much are you going to make?" I says, "Nothing." <laughs> she says, "What? What do you mean nothing?" I says, "It's a commission job." She says, I don't understand that. Well, how much are you going to get paid every week? I said, nothing. She thought I lost my mind, right? Mm -hmm. But I said, I ran into this guy named Art, and I believe in this guy. He, he said that I can really be successful in this business. Back then, they'd give you like a couple of hundred dollar a week draw against commission, which basically means that, hey, man, if you don't sell, <laughs> you don't eat. Right, Lex? Oh, yeah. You don't sell, you don't eat. That's it. I mean, that's just the way it was. But I said, I know I can do this, man. All I gotta do, he says, listen, it doesn't matter what my past was, it doesn't matter anything. that. He's gonna teach me, he's gonna train me. I says, I can do this, honey. And she says, well, if you, you believe in yourself, then go for it. So I went back the next day and I started working and Art gave me the best training you can ever get. You know what that was? <laughs> send you out. What he said, what was it? Just send you out. He there. said, hey man, <laughs> you're looking sharp today, buddy. You're wearing a shirt and tie, you look good. There's the cars, here's your pen. You need me? Let me know, all right? <laughs> Say three in the jungle. <laughs> Go out there. Now, don't get me wrong. He really did train me. You know, he took me under his wing. But the truth is, is that that's what the training was back then. So you guys are going through a formal sales training for the next four days to learn what to say, how to say it, what to do, and how to do it. This is really exciting for you. I'm excited for you guys. That business changed my life. And it can change yours if you allow it. This is truly the greatest business on the planet. If you're here because you want to make money, who's here because they want to make money? I mean, all of us. Let's face it. You're not coming here because you just want to come here to hang out with us, right? No. You're here to make money. This business can do it for you if you allow it, if you believe in it. Do we all believe that we can do this? Yes, yes, yes sir. Okay, you're here now. You're not going to step foot in a dealership till probably Friday, if not even maybe Monday for some of you. Some of the general managers and sales managers have come here to, to see you guys and how they're, you're doing. But the one thing that Art did really, really instill in me, and it still it's instilled into me today, and thank God for him. Thank God he, he was part of my life. He really instilled the fact that it, it, it doesn't matter your past. If you believe, if you can conceive something and you believe it, then you can achieve it. He says, forget everything that's happened in the past. Forget what you did in the past. 
He says, you can be a very successful salesperson if you learn, you commit, and you become dedicated to this business. You work hard, you can make six figures a year. And I've never made that kind of money in my life before. Okay, remember I was digging ditches, right? I'm gonna tell you now, in the beginning, it's not easy. For me it wasn't, I don't know, maybe some of you will be like the guy that we hired who's working currently over at a store in Fort Lauderdale that made 13,000 this third month. I, it wasn't for me. It took me a little while to get it, okay? In fact, it took me about four months to even to start making a little bit of money because I had to go over that hump period, okay? It's not easy. This is not an easy business. It is easy in the aspect you just gotta treat people right and, and, and never lie to them. But it's not easy because you gotta work hard and you gotta get it. You gotta take time to get it. Is this making sense? Yes. But then after that, fourth month or so, I kind of started getting it. And I kind of started to realize that, hey man, I can do this because then I sold kind of a little bit. I saw I made like five grand, six grand. And for me, that was a lot of money. And then every month I started going up, maybe six grand, and seven grand, nine grand. By like the ninth or 10th month, I made my first $10,000 monthly check in commissions ever. I never made that kind of money legally ever before. <laughs> <laughs> You gotta watch this guy here. <laughs> no, really, I never did. I mean, I never made it illegally either, but I never made that kind of money, you know, before. And I was like, wow, man, this business, you can really do well. So I'm really excited for you guys, man. This is a great business. This is such an incredible business. You can move up in this business. If you have goals and vision and dreams, you can get into management if that's what you want. You can make six figures a year for the rest of your life. There's really two tracks to take. One is sales, where you don't want to get into management because there's a lot of ton of hours, man. I mean, you guys know, right? I mean, you got to work, you know, sometimes till midnight, one o'clock. It's a lot of hours, a lot of pressure. Yeah, you're gonna make six figures a year for the rest of your life: hundred grand, two hundred grand, three hundred, four hundred, five hundred thousand dollars a year. Sometimes more. No question. Okay, that's management. But sometimes in sales, you just you just want to kind of build your own business within a business. You want to work off a repeat and referral. You don't want to worry about the customers coming off of the lot. You want to be people calling you and saying, hey, Evanon, hey, I need to come in. You got a car in your lot. I want to come, uh, come look at it and buy it from you. Good position to be in, right? Yeah. Like my friend Tommy, one of my best friends, Tommy. Okay? You know Tommy, of course. right? Tommy will sell 20 cars a month, 25 cars a month. He'll make $140,000 this year, all off a repeat and referral business. Strictly off a repeat and referral business. So he doesn't worry about the customer coming on the lot. He gets a customer to come to him, to call him. Good business, right? Works from nine to six, Monday through Saturday. Sometimes he goes to six on Saturday. Never works on Sunday, does he? Never comes in Sunday. Goes fishing every day, 6.30. With a little pole. Good life, isn't it? Makes, like I said, he's gonna make six figures a year for the rest of his life. Not bad. Or maybe like Steve Harrington. Steve and I go back 22 years. He worked, started, we started working at, Coca, uh, at uh, King Mitsubishi, which is Coconut Creek Mitsubishi, same company. He's still there, still there today. He's an incredible, he's an anomaly. He's one of a kind. But Steve, he doesn't worry about taking ups. In fact, he sells quite a bit of cars every single month as a salesman, he's not a manager. How many cars do you think he sells, right? Just take it. Is that a couple? Five. Well, he sells a few, <laughs> more than that. Fred, what do you think? He's been there 22 years. 30. 30. How about you? You've gotten some business. Lex, what do you think? 25, 30. Okay. <clears throat> how many cars do you think this gentleman sells a month? 35. I'm not exaggerating. He sells them one at a time. This is not fleet business either. Not fleet business. Okay? Not fleet business. This is one at a time. Al, how many does he sell every month? 100. Over how many? Uh, over 100. Over 100 cars a month. What? He has three assistants and his own F&I guy paid for by the dealership. How you doing? F and I, good, and I'm glad you said that, thank you. If I say a term or Al says a term that you don't understand, like F and I guy, stop us and let us know, okay? Because sometimes we get a, F and I stands for finance and insurance. So they're the people that you go, when, you, when you're ready to buy the car, you go into the finance office, that's who finance and insurance is, okay? He sells over 100 cars a month, one at a time. It's pretty, so Fred, you guys know the business a little bit, right? You can only imagine how much he makes, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, in sales, or you can take that management track, like I talked about. Okay, I'd now take that over a management. <laughs> of course you would, right? You know, now don't get me wrong. You know, Steve works like he's.
permanently there, okay? You know, I mean, you can choose to sell 50 and kind of have the weekends off if you want. Oh, by the way, you know what the best part about that is when you're selling 20, 30, 40, 50 cars a month on your own without worrying about a customer coming on a lot? You know what the best part about that is? You make your own hours, basically. Yeah, you can make your own hours. It's your own business within a business. And by the way, you can't get fired. You want to talk about job security? What yeah. are they going to do, fire you? <laughs> okay, see ya. Bye. <laughs> Listen, I, I can tell you that if, if the owner of the dealership is in the middle of the showroom, Steve, the guy who sells 100 cars, Felipe, he can go, hey, guess what, man? Go F yourself. <laughs> you know what the owner will do? <laughs> yes, sir, he's $5 more. <laughs> <laughs> okay? Now, it's a little bit of a different, but now I don't recommend you do that. <laughs> you hear that? I don't like that. Right. <laughs> but my, you know my point, right? The whole point is, is that's your own job security because it's your business within a business. Think about that. This is your business within a business. Think about the automotive industry, what this can do for you. How many people want to know, how many people here want to be in business for themselves? Or have wanted to be in business for themselves? Almost everyone, right? Or everybody. Okay. Not easy, is it? When you're a business owner, who's the last person to get paid? You. 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 Guess who gets paid first? Everybody else. Everyone else and everything else. Okay? Light bill, electric bill, desks marketing, advertising. You go to work at a dealership, they pay for it all. They give you an office, they give you a CRM system, which stands for Customer Relations Thank Management you. Tool, okay? CRM, we're gonna go through all that. They, they, pay, they pay for uh, the lights, they pay for that computer, they pay for your phone, they pay for posters if you wanna do mailers. They pay for everything. Hey, they even pay for millions of dollars worth of inventory for you. And they even pay for customers to come see you. You don't have to pay for any of this. And you're in business for yourself. So every one of you in this room are truly entrepreneurial in mind. Because you're willing to take a step into that business, that world of entrepreneurship. Because let's face it, at the end of the week, when you get your check, yes, this top left hand corner, right hand corner of that check has the name of the dealership. Bottom right hand corner has a signature from someone else. But who's really writing that check? Mm -hmm. You are. You are. You're earning that amount of money. So you should congratulate yourself on taking that step. Not many people in this world are willing to do that. Many people in this world say, well, how much can I make a week? How much hourly does it pay? That's not this business. In fact, if that's really what you're thinking, you should probably leave now. No, you want to say, how much can I earn? Can I make a hundred or two hundred thousand dollars a year selling cars? Absolutely. You can go to any dealership in the country. There's people there right now making well into the six figures a year selling cars, and then on the other side, there's people making thirty grand a year. Hmm. What's the difference between the two, Evan? What's the difference between the person making Drive. forty grand a year? Consistency. No, 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 no. That yes, is. yes. But what's the biggest difference between someone making forty grand a year, or frankly, four hundred grand a year? In the car business, you go to any dealership right now, there's a guy making 40, or a girl, or and there's a guy or a girl making 400. What's the difference, yes? What's the main difference? Hard yes. work. What is it? Hard work. Yes, what else? This is customer way. relations. Customer relationships, yes, what else? Uh, drive is different. Drive, but it's mainly, and I want you guys to all get this. Discipline, could be. Not only discipline, but you're all right. Consistency. It's mainly belief. Yeah. It's the belief that you can. The belief that we can make four hundred or five hundred thousand a year. Eighteen years ago, when I met this man, who was going to come up here in a couple minutes. Al DeSaro. Al's known all over. He's a well-known trainer throughout the United States. I'm honored to be associated with him, and the reason is because he's changed the lives of thousands of people. When I met him eighteen years ago, I was a general sales manager for a dealership out in Pepper Pines, big dealership, and um, he says, "I want to." come train your guys, you know? And I was always into personal development and training, because I never, you know, I, I got some real personal mentorship from art, but never went to really too many formal sales training programs until I started going to seminars, right? So I said, sure, man. I said, okay, how much? He gave me the right price, though. Do you remember how much it was? For, no, I don't know. Do you remember how much it was when he said, when I asked him how much for the training? Um, a thousand? No, no, it was better than that. <laughs> <laughs> he gave me the right answer. What do you think it was? Zero. Zero. <clears throat> I said, okay, do it. Because he knew he was gonna come in and pretty much transform the, the, the dealership and we would just bring him on as a trainer and hire him, right? And he did that. And 
To this day, the vast majority of those people 18 years ago are still in the business. In fact, John Lasada knows a lot of them, right, John? Yes. In fact, there was two young kids in there. I don't want to mention their names because they're on video, and I don't want to mention their names and how much they make, but I'll just say this. They're two young brothers. One was 18 and one was 19. You're going to know who they were when I start talking about them. But I knew one thing, man. They were hungry. These guys were hungry. One was 18 and one was 19. This is going back 18 or 19 years ago. Young, young kids, man, but they were hungry. They were smart. They, were, they, they had hustle. They were, you got to have some hustle in this business. Okay? Today, one of them is the general sales manager for the largest Toyota dealership in the country. One of the uh, second largest Toyota dealership in the country. Now you know who it is. <laughs> and the other one's the general manager for the second largest Nissan dealership in the country. And respectively, they make between three hundred dollars to $500,000 a year. I don't want to tell you these numbers to impress you. I want to tell you these numbers to impress upon you that you can do this. We can all do this in the room, and it all begins with what? The, the belief. The belief. The belief that you can. It all begins with the belief. You got to believe yourself. You got to believe in yourself. You got to believe that you can do this. Look, if I can do this, if I can start making six figures a year when I was 25 years old for the first time officially in my life and never look back, there's no difference between a high school dropout from the 10th grade high school dropout to anybody in this room. There's no difference. We can all do it. The only difference is the belief that you can. I remember the first book that I read, and one of the first books Art gave me to read, and you might want to write this down, was Thinking Grow Rich by Napoleon Hill. Oh, yeah. Who said, oh, yeah? Great book. Great book, right? Who else read Thinking Grow Rich by? Anybody read that book? <coughs> Thank you, Grow Rich by Napoleon Hill. And I got to tell you, there it is. There you go, written down from the last one, right? John Maxwell, good. And that book, I remember that book literally. I mean, the one section I got out of that, and that book was a, 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 um, a study of the 500 wealthiest people at that time, the 500 wealthiest people in the world at that time, what they did. And, and the funny part is, it, it didn't matter about your background. It didn't matter about what you did. It didn't matter if you had fancy degrees hanging on the wall, right, Martin? No, I mean, think about it, right? Henry Ford, who started Ford Motor Company, he had an eighth grade education. But one thing he was an expert at was what? The manufacturing of automobiles, right or wrong? And he also talked about the top salespeople in the world. The top salespeople in the world are experts at what? Sales. How to treat people right, what to say, how to overcome objections. They study their field, they study their traits every day. And when Art told me, he says, Matt, you gotta learn every day, you gotta study every day. And I started to do that, it changed my life. Remember, I never read books before. Yeah, I never read a book. It was a book, you know what I mean? I, if it didn't have a lot of pictures in it, I wasn't picking it up. <laughs> okay? But when Art told me that, and I read that book, that changed my life because I started saying, you know what, I'm gonna commit myself to learning. I'm gonna to commit to reading at least 30 minutes a day. 30 minutes a day in the study of sales so I can study the psychology of sales, what people think, what people do, how to say it, what to say. And it changed my life. That's why you're all here today. You're all here today because dealers have a problem. And their problem is to find good people that are trained. That's where we come in. The dealers hire us to find the best people we can. Now, this, I don't know how many people are in this room right now, but if you all remember, if you guys were here during the interview process, how many applications did we go, well Jonathan's not here, how many applications did we go through? By, by phone, how many? About Probably about close to 200 applications. Pre-screening them, meeting them in person, going through them by phone, Okay, coming here, sitting down one-on-one -on -one with them. And obviously there's maybe 15 or 16 or 17 people in the room. Why? Because we're not just going to bring anybody in this. We feel you guys have it. We feel that you guys have what it takes to be in this business. All of you have what it takes to be in this business, or else we would not have invited you back. And I, I'm saying that to let you guys know that we believe in you, or else you wouldn't be here. That's a fact. That's a fact. And when we go through 150 or 200 applications, that's real. And we meet with people, we sit down with them, we talk to them one-on-one, -on -one, but not everybody has it. Let's be honest. 
Not everybody has what it takes because, again, this is a hard business. You've got to put a lot of hours in, right, Edwin? Yes. Man, you know, you're in hospitality previously, right? Yes. You were in hospitality, right? I mean, you, you know the hours. You work until 12, 1 o'clock, 2 o'clock, and you won't be doing that here. But that's not abnormal, is it, Martin? Well, you weren't in the hospitality business, right? But I was still working a lot of hours, yeah, starting you, from 10 to 11. You've got to put in the hours. You've got you to dedicate yourself to this. Man, you're going to get a lot of rejection. People are going to say, no, I'm not buying today. That's okay. doesn't mean they're not, but that means they're saying, no, I'm not buying today, right? When someone says, listen, I'm not buying today. I've got to go shop three other places, and whoever gives me the best price, that's where I'm going to buy a car from, right? That doesn't mean they're not buying from you today. That's just what they're saying. But if we learn what to say and how to say it and what to do and how to do it, you can become an expert in this. You guys are here for a reason. You are all here because you were chosen out of all those people because we feel you got what it takes. And I hope that every one of you in this room will be very successful in this business. I hope that every one in your room, this room will dedicate yourselves to this because the reality is, is that this business can change your life. It really can. I say that with the utmost passion in every bone of my body. It changed mine. This business changed my life. It could for you too. But remember, you can't lie to people. That stereotypical car salesperson, that thought that we have in our minds, get it out of your mind. It's not true. Those people who gave us those bad reputation way back then, that's that, that, those days, forget that. That's crap. You don't lie to people. Give them what they want. You treat them right. Make a friend. Have them like you and trust you. If they like you and trust you, they're gonna buy a car from you. Right, Lex? Oh, yeah. Right, Fred? Absolutely. And you don't have to lie and cheat to do it. In fact, you have to be honest and respectful. It's completely the opposite. So you're not gonna learn any manipulative tactics here in this class this four days. You're not gonna learn any of that stuff. You're gonna learn more. In fact, this is not just about auto sales. Right, Terrence? Yes, sir. This is about life. You're going to learn so much in the next four days. I mean, this is much more than the steps of the sale, much more than overcoming objections. It's about setting up life, goals, having goals, what, what you want to go after. So buckle in. Let's get ready to have some fun. Like I said, the first day, I get it. No one knows each other. You're not talking to each other. I see that. I understand. But over the next few four days, you guys are going to be like best of friends. You guys are going to be relaxed. So relax. Let's have some fun together. A lot of role playing here. We're not going to be up here just talking all the time. You're going to get into a lot of role play, have a lot of exercises, a lot of fun, a lot of real life as much as we possibly can of being in the car business. And then you guys are going to go into the car business once you pass this class. That's our deal. Our deal is we have to produce the best people we can to our dealers or else we won't have dealers, will we? So, I'm excited for everybody here. For now, I want to bring up Al. I want to tell you a little bit about Al, okay? Al DeSaro is a legend, especially here in South Florida. Look, there he goes with the face. <laughs> Hates when I say it, but it's the truth, okay? See all these chickens on the wall? Yeah. Yeah, don't worry about it. I'm not going to tell you what they are until Al <laughs> says it, right? But let's just say Al DeSaro invented the chicken. Well, I don't want to say it that way. Al DeSaro came before the chicken. Al came before the chicken. Okay? Came before the chicken. But we'll get into that. No spoiler alerts here. But I can tell you that he's a legend, and I can tell you that, oh yeah, and I can tell you that he's changed the lives of thousands of people. Just the other day, I walked into a Nissan dealership, the general manager of that Nissan dealership. I go over to him, and the first time I ever met him, and I said, hey, you know, I like to, you know, you got, we, we got salespeople for you, really good, well-qualified, uh, trained salespeople. And he says, okay, great. I said, my partner's Al DeSoro. He says, well, how much you charge? I said, this amount of money, and it's not cheap, okay? He says, wow, Al DeSoro, man, he's tripled his price since he taught me on my kitchen table 25 <laughs> years ago. He changed that man's life, too. Well, guess what? A few of you will be working at that dealership, okay? So this man's changed the lives of a lot of people, and he's done it through real, true, heartfelt teaching and training. Heartfelt teaching and training. And you guys are about to experience that. I love this guy, and I'm always going to be partners with this guy. Let's give him a big round of applause.
Ever hear the phrase, good cop, bad cop? Yes. yes. Good cop, <laughs> bad cop. I'm a bad cop. You know why? Because we are going to find out if you have what it takes. You will not slide through this class. Because you're here doesn't mean you're hired. We got to make sure you have what it takes. That's the importance right now. We got to make sure you have what it takes. This is a business. We started this business over three years ago. I've been training for 30 years. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> but we started this business, and dealerships pay us, they pay us very well to produce the right people. So you're going to have to really buckle down and understand that because you're sitting here doesn't mean you're hired. And I don't say that as a threat, but this is business. This is business. We picked you, they're going to pay us, not you, and we're going to produce unbelievable people. Martin was recommended by somebody I trained a year ago, right? Yes, sir. And he said to you last, his first year he made how much? $75,000. $75,000 his first year. We have a lot of people make 70, 75. We have a lot of people make 50, 60. And there's a few people that make 30. And the reason they made 30 Sorry. is because they didn't change anything. They did not change anything. I thought you made a lot. Yeah. <laughs> I'll tell you about that later. <laughs> All right, so the money's here, but the key is how do you get it? See, the car business, I'm not gonna say it's, it's hard. I'm not gonna say it's not hard. It is hard, but it's simple when you understand it, but mostly you gotta understand you. So to be successful, you're gonna have to do things you never did to get what you've ever had. You know, a lot of you in this room, let's face it, you're low on money, a lot of you, you know, you're not sure how you're going to pay the rent. See, every month the knock on the door is rent's due, mortgage is due, car payment's due, electric's due, cable's due, and for some years, alimony, child support's due. <laughs> okay? They're, they're going to keep coming. But you have to understand that wherever you're at financially right now, because I know some years are really low on dough. You got yourself there. You didn't plan ahead, okay? I, listen, I talk from experience, all right? I talk from experience. But you didn't plan ahead, but you're supposed to be here. See, spiritually, you're supposed to be here. You read the ad, you, you came down here, you passed the interviews, you're supposed to be here. That's the flow of the universe. Understand, you gotta go with the universe. People that aren't successful, fight it. You gotta go with it, but you have to understand that you right now, and I'm going to be honest with you, you're in a fight for your life right now. You need to fight for your life right now. Because if this doesn't work, guess where you're going? Back to what you were doing before. Back to waiting tables, bartending, or whatever it was. Back to making $10, $12 an hour, something you don't like. That's why you don't want to miss this. See, there's some rules in here. Rule number one is please put your phones away and do not text. Rule number one. Plenty of room for that. Rule number two, if you gotta go to the bathroom, you don't need to raise your hand and say, I gotta, I gotta go to the bathroom. Go out the door to your left, right up top here, okay? Rule number three, no cross-talking. You know what cross-talking means, George? Absolutely. What does cross-talking mean? Well, you're talking to me and Matt talking. Right, I'm talking to somebody and you guys are talking over here. You don't wanna do that. I don't mean I'm a bad cop, but really, if I don't think you have it, I let you go. I don't waste any time. I wanna make a lot of money in this business and I'm only, we only do it with great people. So if you do something that doesn't fit we're going to say goodbye to you. We love you, but we're going to say goodbye to you. Everybody understand that? Yes, sir. All right? Very, very important. When we take breaks, you have a favorite song that you think about all the time? So far. You have a song that uh, you like? Yeah. You have a song you like? Okay, you have a song? You have a song? Okay. You guys got songs? Because mm -hmm. when we start, when we take a break, if you're not in here by the minute that we're supposed to start, you got to come up here and sing a song. <laughs> Real simple. Everybody understand that? Yeah. Okay? Yeah. So if we break at 11, to 11.15, you better be in this room at 11.15. If not, you have to sing. If you don't sing, we don't let you go. We, let, we, we say goodbye. Everybody understand that? Okay. We are grown-ups now. We're, we're men and we're women. It's time to find the best in you. It's the time that you find out what is your success blocker. Do you know what your success blocker is? No. Yourself. 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 You're, we're in the way. We got the success blocker that blocks us from being happy. See, some of you are, are settling for peanuts. Some of you are settling just, uh, I could just make a living. Why make a living? How about making a life? How about a life? How about the real life? 
Some of us work paycheck to paycheck, right? We get a paycheck, we pay our bill, nothing left over. Get a paycheck, pay our bill, nothing left over. And then when we go on a vacation, we go on a scrawny vacation. We go to rooms, rooms.com. Screw rooms.com. I want a suite overlooking the ocean. I worked all year. I want to see the ocean. I want to be on mountains. But what happens is we work every year, and you probably remember some of your parents, right? I don't want, when my dad had a vacation, which he was a laborer, he had a week, what did he do? He fixed the car, fixed the house, did, you know, that was no vacation. I look at it right now, I go, that poor man never really had a vacation. He was always worried about that we don't have any money. Okay. You know, Matt told you where he's from. Was, I come from a very blue collar family. You know what a blue collar family is? Yes, sir. What's a blue collar family? Somebody was making decent, decent living, basically. No, sir. Blue collar family. Political business. No, blue collar family. Never heard about it. Blue collar family. Hard working family. Hard working family. No education. Mom and dad never had an education. In fact, my parents never even graduated high school. Back in the Depression, they were in line waiting for food years ago. Okay? So I don't come from a silver spoon. I've been a bartender. I've been a waiter. I've worked construction. I've worked in a factory. I worked in pumping gas in the middle of the winter in Pennsylvania. I've done every stinking job you can. Can you imagine? And then I found the car business. That was my way out. The car business was my way out. And the car business is very, very good to me. Very good to me. Yes, I've trained thousands of people all over the country. In fact, this Sunday I'm flying to Chicago to do a class in Chicago. Last week, Matt was up in uh, Los Angeles doing a class out in Los Angeles. We got some people from India wanting us to go to India to train people in India. Can you imagine that? Why? Because anything is possible if you go forward. But you got to clean out your baggage, whatever your baggage might be, whatever junk is in your trunk. John, do you know what that means, junk in your trunk? Like baggage, yeah. Yeah. Edwin? Stuff that you don't need. Stuff you don't need. Stuff you can do without. Stuff you can do without. Things that are holding you back. Things that are holding you back. Junk in your trunk. What is junk in your trunk? Dead weight. Dead weight. Junk in the trunk is when you keep thinking about what happened before. When you keep going back to what happened before, see a lot of people, you know, when you talk to psychologists, most people are screwed up because of childhood. Something happened in childhood, whatever it might be. Maybe you didn't have two parents. Maybe you had one parent. Maybe you had a, a, an abusive father or mother. Maybe nobody told you they love you. Maybe I had one guy says, my dad just told me I was a loser every day. How do you think he felt? He felt like a loser, right? So what's ever happened to you in the past, whatever it might be, you didn't grow up with two parents, you didn't grow up in a loving family, guess what? That belongs in the past. It's in the past, it doesn't belong here anymore. But we keep thinking, well, when I was a kid and this happened to me, maybe you were violated as a kid, maybe you did somebody did something to you, and it was a big secret, and you carried that secret around, and that secret turned into shame, and you're walking around with all that shame. You can't be successful because that stuff holds you down. Not everybody's had a perfect life, right? Would you agree with me? Not everybody's had two loving parents. We have one guy in here, he says, I never celebrate Christmas. I go, why? He goes, because I don't celebrate Christmas. Christmas is the most horrible holiday in the world. Whoa. I better find out what his problem is. Every Christmas Eve, his father was a truck driver. He drove produce locally to stores. He said, and his father was an alcoholic, and every Christmas Eve, his father would go to work a half a day, and then when he was work done work, he'd go to the beer garden, the bar, he'd get drunk, and then he came home. He said, my dad was a nasty drunk. When he came home, he'd be yelling at everybody, he'd slap my mother, he'd be cursing at me. He goes, and the last thing he'd do is he'd kick the Christmas tree over every Christmas. Every Christmas. Every single Christmas. That's why he didn't want to celebrate Christmas anymore, because of what had his dad did. But if you have anything like that, it belongs in the past. It doesn't belong here. Because this isn't going to work. If you don't change, you're wasting your time, you're wasting our time, you're wasting the car dealer's time. You've got to learn to change. You've got to start building up your positive muscle. You've got to get rid of that junk in your trunk. See, our success blocker is us. People that are successful realize what their success blocker was and over, overcame it. You've got to overcome that success blocker. Because you're not thinking. Some of these are thinking, well, you know, if I can make 40000 a year, why would you want to make 40000 a year when you make seventy or eighty or hundred? Why? Because your brains are programmed that way. See, we test every day. See, every day there is a test. And there is a test at the end of the class.
But every day we, we test. We decide whether we're going to invite you back. That's up to you. It's not up to us. But every day there's a test. So, Cheryl, if I ask you, how many people do you see in a room? What would you say? In this room? No, no, the room about five blocks up. <laughs> <laughs> I counted 13 of us sitting at the table. 13, 13. Felipe, how many people do you see in the room? 14. 14. How many people do you see in the room? 15. 15. Lex, how many people do you see in the room? 16. 16. How many people do you see in the room, John? 17. Okay, if that was a test, you failed. You failed it. Because the truth is, how many people are really in the room? Two. You and me or you and Matt, who's ever up here. There's only two people in the room. What does that mean? Nobody six. You're here by yourself. Don't worry about impressing anybody. Don't try to be extra smart, okay? There's only two of us in the room. Everybody get that? Yeah. Yes. You're here to gather as much information so you can change your life. You can change the way you live. You can do things for your family you never thought you could do. But you have to understand, this is the real deal. There's no classes like this. I've been in a car for 49 years. <laughs> There's no classes like this because this is the real deal. The car business isn't hard. The hardest thing is you. You beating yourself up. You punishing yourself for what happened in the past. You punishing yourself for where you are right now. And you are where you're supposed to be. Because some of you are going to skyrocket. You are going to go, you're going to be unbelievable champions. Some of you, you're going to go back to doing what you're doing before. I can't do this. This won't work. Successful after it blocks you from success because of your thinking. You got to change the way you think. This is an exciting business. A lot of times we ask people, why do you want to sell cars? Because I love cars. When I hear that, I almost want to end the interview. You love cars. I love cars too, but I, they don't pay me any money. People pay you money. This is a people business. You understand that? So we're going to give you a lot of different exercises, but you have to understand you're, the, you're in a people business. But how do you, what do you do? You got to get rid of the junk in your trunk. You got to get rid of the stuff that's holding you back. The bad memories growing up, whatever, whatever. You were beat up, you were bullied as a kid. You grew up with one parent, whatever it might be. You got to understand that that belongs to the past. See, we have one thing in common today. We are all here and we're breathing, right? That's what we have in common. Are we going to be here tomorrow? I hope so. I hope so, but you never know, right? All we got is today. They call it a gift, a present, right? That's what we got today. So why would we want to think about something that happened in the past that makes us sad and take it and drag it to the present moment? Why would we want to do that? Because we were taught to do that. Now, I'm going to ask you another question. I want you to raise your hand. I want you to be honest. I want you to raise your hand if you're broke. Okay. If that was a test, you failed it. There's nobody in this room that's broke. You're low on cash. You're short on funds. You're not broke. See, but somehow you got this broke thing that it's, it's money. Broke is when you're homeless. Your life is broke. Your family's broke. Everything's broke. That's what broke is. You're just low on money. That's all it is. But you're programmed to think, oh, I'm broke. Well, that, that sticks you there. You're sticking. Yeah, I'm broke. Yeah, I'm broke. Yeah, I'm broke. Right? So you do it to yourself. Nobody in this room is broke. Did anybody miss a meal? Nobody missed a meal. Everybody's got clothes on. If we look out in the parking lot, there's probably cars out there and they got gas in them. How could you be broke? See, you gotta change the way you think. You can't be thinking the same way. This business isn't your normal business. You gotta be sharp. You gotta be clear on what you want. You have to have goals, you have to have dreams. You have to have things that you want that are out there waiting for you. We don't realize it. There's blessings and miracles out there waiting for you. And they're saying, come on, do the right thing and you can have this. But we usually fall <laughs> short of that. You have to know <coughs> You know where the richest places on earth? The richest place? The graveyard. Huh? The graveyard. The graveyard. Right on. The graveyard. Dreams that were not come true. Books that were never written. Things that were never invented. The graveyard. One of the richest places on earth. These books that were never written. Speeches that were never put out there. Think about that. Just think about it. She cheated on me. Hey, that's a good thing. She cheated on you. Now you know. You didn't wait 10 years for her to find out. Right? Okay. What's ever holding you back? You gotta get rid of, you gotta forgive yourself. And the greatest thing that I've learned is that the most important thing is our feelings, how we feel. We gotta love ourselves. 
you will never find happiness until you love yourself. People that get married, does everybody know when people get married, within three to five years, 50% is going to be divorced? You know that? Everybody? Okay. People that get married, over 50% in three years to five years are going to be divorced. Why? Because nobody loved them. So, see, when you love yourself, you're going to make sure that other person is the same as you. But when you don't love yourself, you're going to take somebody that, oh, she's good looking, I better get married. Oh, she makes me laugh. Yeah? How long will that last? Oh, we had great sex. Now, how long will that last? You got to learn to love yourself. You got to learn that your feelings are the most important feelings in the world. Nothing's more important than how you feel about yourself. If you can't get this, this isn't going to work. You got to fall in love with you again. You haven't loved yourself. You might be beating yourself up for a long time. Poor me. I got nothing. I got to look where I live. I live in a room. I got no money. I got an old car. Yeah, well, keep telling yourself that way, and you'll get <laughs> stuck there. You'll get stuck there. But you got to get rid of the junk in your trunk. And the easiest thing is, the easiest thing is, six inches between your ears. <coughs> See, if people just realize that's the only thing you need to worry about, is what's going on in here. What's going on in there? That's the whole, that's the whole thing to it. I didn't, it took me a long time to realize that it's the six inches between our ears. If we're thinking junk, we're going to feel like garbage. If we're thinking positive, if we're thinking things that we want in life, we're thinking about happiness. You got to get rid of that because that's the most important thing in your life, right? It's six inches between your ears. And you know what we call that? Good head. Thank you very much. We call it good head. Who likes good head? Who likes good head? Raise your hand if you like good head. Yeah. Yeah. You guys are sick. Put your hand in. <laughs> it's all about having good head. Not the good head you guys are thinking about. But it's all about having good head. It's trying to look on the bright side of everything. We have good head. You have to get rid of anything that holds you back. What's the difference between me and Lex? Huh? What's the difference between me and Lex? <laughs> huh? He was in the sun a little longer than me, right? Okay. What's the difference? There's no difference. Nothing. There's no difference. So if you got prejudice in your family, you need to stop it. You need to break it. Okay. People that are prejudiced, you can't get successful when you're prejudiced. If somebody's prejudiced against the color of your skin, trust me, they're prejudiced against bald-headed men. They're prejudiced against Italians and Polish people and Irish people, whatever. Okay. So if you grew up with that, it's time to break that. Because you can't be successful when you don't like somebody for the color of their skin or the slant of their eyes. See, that's all part of life. See, the truth is, it's our journey in life. You've all been in different businesses, right? Hospitality, here's your journey. Oh, I'm going to be a waiter for a while. Okay, back. Oh, I'm going to do ATT work. Oh, okay, right. So the car business is on your journey. It's on your journey. It's just a journey. That's all this is. And you're going to do the car business. Let's smack the heck out of the car business. Let's learn the car business. There's people out there making money by mistake. It doesn't take a lot to sell cars, and this program will teach you that. But if you don't clean out your brain, your, your, these six inches, you don't clean them out, you're going to keep walking around feeling you're not worthy. You're not worthwhile. And if you're going to think that, it's hard to be successful. You're just fighting. See, we have two voices that always go on in everybody's head. This is the positive voice that tells you you can do things. This over here is the success blocker saying, no, you can't. You, you, you never make a lot of money. Nobody in your family ever made a lot of money. You know, how many jobs have you had in the past? How many times have you been fired? You can't do it. No, no, you can do it. Come on, man, do the work, do the work. No, 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 no. All right, you go home at night, you go home at night, and what do most people do they go home? They pick up their remote control, they watch TV all night long, all night long. But somebody that's motivated, that has goals and dreams, what are you doing? I ain't watching TV. It doesn't pay me any money. I'm going to go out for a walk. I'm going to go out for a jog. I'm going to go out for a swim. I'm going to sit outside and meditate. I'm going to read a positive book instead of watching TV. Because people are addicted to TV. They're so addicted to TV. I'm not telling you I don't watch TV, but I select what I'm going to watch. Okay? I go home. I used to go for a swim, or I go for a swim in the morning. I go for the gym. 
Body doesn't want to get up at five o'clock to go to the gym. It takes a little coaxing to get, for me to get up, but I want to do things that nobody else will do that will help me get further ahead in life. Everybody understand that? So it's not just learning about cars, it's learning about you. It's learning about your six inches. What have you been thinking all these years? Okay, time to stop thinking about it. Something happened to me a long time ago. I thought about it for 10 years, every single day. Every single day. So one day I thought, what am I doing? I'm beating myself up for what? Beat yourself up for what? Everybody has the right. This is America, the land of opportunity. Okay? This is America, the land of opportunity. That means people from any country can come here. And the funny thing is that people from other countries come here and they put Americans to shame because they're willing to work harder than everybody else. They're willing to give more than everybody else. I know a man that came from Cuba on a raft, on a raft. He landed on Hollywood Beach. Had to go through the immigration and all that. He needed a job because his family was in Cuba. He needed a job so bad, nobody wanted to give him a job. So this restaurant down in Little Havana, down south, Miami, they gave him a job cleaning up. Paid him like four or five dollars an hour. Not a lot of money, but guess what? He needed to make money. And at night, He'd, go, he'd show up in the restaurant closed at 11 o'clock, they'd lock him inside, he couldn't leave, and he had to clean the restaurant. So when he was offered a job, he said, the guy said, I'll pay you $5 an hour. No problem. He said, okay, I'm going to lock in. You can't get out. There's no way. You've got to be here until I, I open up at 7 o'clock in the morning. First night, he's in there working. Owner of the restaurant comes in the next day, walks in and goes, oh my God, what did you do? This place is cleaner than it's ever been. This guy scrubbed the floors with toothbrushes. He did everything. This restaurant looked so great. And as time went on, the owner really liked this person. And he said to him one day, how would you like to learn how to work the grill? He goes, I'm in. He said, I'll pay you maybe six bucks an hour. He goes, I'm in. So now he was on the grill. Then he became the, the main chef. And the final straw was, he bought the restaurant from the owner. And he came with a shirt on his back from Cuba, okay? There's a lot of stories out there like that, okay? This is the land of opportunity. Most people miss it. Most people on their dying bed say, I wish I had a chance to do this again. I wish I did something different. Well, sometimes it's too late. When you're on your dying bed, all you can think about what you didn't do instead of about what you should do. So it's time now. It's time that you got rid, get rid of all the barriers, get rid of any negative pride, because I'm gonna tell you, this four-day course makes a difference in everybody's life when you understand it. But you gotta change things. It's just like driving down the road, driving down the road. Anybody ever drive down the road, everything is great, and somebody cuts in front of you, <laughs> right? What do we wanna do, <laughs> huh? We wanna travel, <laughs> hey, you, right? We wanna yell at them, right? We wanna give them the face, we wanna give them the finger, right? We wanna yell at them. First of all, you can't do that anymore. People have guns. <laughs> 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 But we get so aggravated at a complete stranger. A complete stranger, we, all of our good energy goes negative, right? If somebody cuts in front of you, God, I hope he gets to go where he's going on time, and that's it, you don't think about it anymore. <clears throat> I get guys want to hold the door. I always want to hold the door for beautiful women, right? But women that aren't beautiful, we don't hold the door. <laughs> Why do we choose? <laughs> Why do we choose? To hold the door for everybody. See what I'm saying? See, when you're selective, that's what hurts us. You gotta be open. You gotta understand that when you wake up in the morning, okay, and this is a fact, when you wake up in the morning, you gotta change it starting now. You might be one of those people that the alarm goes off, oh, oh gee, five more minutes. Alarm goes off again, oh, five more minutes. Your alarm goes off, get out of bed. You like coffee, go make some coffee for yourself. I love the mornings. I have a routine in the morning. I either jump in a pool real quick, or I go outside and I just listen to the birds and just kinda, be grateful, but think about it. Every day, what happens every day? We get a chance to open two great gifts every day, don't we? What are those wonderful gifts? Yeah, our, eyes. our eyes. We get to open our eyes every day. <clears throat> think about that. Every day, we're hoping that our heart's beating, right? You understand our heart beats every day, every minute, right? Our lungs are pumping, right? You look up, you go, wow, I had a roof over my head. I'm not homeless. I had a mattress under my back. I got a place to sleep. I got food in my refrigerator. I got a car with gas in it. Go to the gratitude side, that you're grateful, you're grateful. But most people wake up, oh God, I hate my job, I hate my boss, I'm not making any money, and that's the way we start our day. 
I know I used to be that way. Okay? We start our day that way. We wake up, we jump into a negative mood. We don't like where we're going. We don't like our job. We're not making any money. And life sucks. And then we're going to have to go through the rest of the day. Think, does that make sense, everybody? Mm -hmm. you got to change that. And it starts right now. It's a blessing that you're here. We don't do religion here. Okay? But we believe that there's a higher power. You want to call that power God? You want to call it a higher power? Spirit, universe, call it whatever you want. There's a power greater than us. And you have to understand that when you get in contact, when you connect with that power, life changes. Why do things happen? I can't tell you why. Why do, you know, they say, well, you know why did all that happen? Why did that person hurt? Why did we have the flood? Why did that person get kidnapped? Why did they rape that child? I have no idea. I just know there's a power greater than ourselves. And when you get in tune with that power in the universe, it makes a world of difference. See, you need to clean your minds. We want to fill it up with good stuff. We want to put good stuff in your head. But you got to work at it. It's so important. You know, you ever uh, trying to pull out of a shopping center? Cars are bumper to bumper. They're not going anywhere, right? And you're like, come on, let me in. Yeah. <laughs> They're not even moving. They're open to let you in, right? I love when I'm out there and somebody's going, go ahead. Yeah, you too. I let three or four people out so people start beeping the horn behind me. And I go, why do people get aggravated because I'm doing something nice? Yeah. It's called love. People don't understand. What is love? Love is just being nice to somebody. Love is letting somebody out in traffic. Love is holding the door. Love is giving somebody your smile. Okay? It's called love. Okay? But you got to love you because if you don't love you, you don't love anybody else. Love is important. But you got to love you first. You're the most important. You need to fall in love with you before you can fall in love with anybody else. You need to fall in love with you because you'll always meet the wrong person because you don't love you. You cannot have a successful relationship if you don't love yourself. People keep trying it all the time and people keep getting divorced all the time. We always say, oh, I need a, I better, oh, she's really pretty, man. I want to, I better stay with her. Oh, I'm getting kind of old. I need to get married. Really? That, is that, that, that's your reasoning? Okay. You'll know when it's right, but you got to be right. You gotta understand that life is to live. Life is to enjoy. And all we gotta do is worry about it one day at a time. One day, that's all we gotta do is worry about today. All we gotta do is worry about six inches between our ears, just today. And when you realize that, it's so much easier. So the past belongs to the past. We don't own it anymore. Whatever happened to you as a child, you don't own it. Let it go. If anybody did you wrong, forgive them. You can't go around with a grudge. It's like having a grudge. You want something to happen to somebody, but you're drinking the poison. You cannot do that. You have to change. If you want to grow, you have to change. Am I making sense to you? Absolutely. Am I making sense? Absolutely. Am I making sense? Okay. Listen, this is not a tough business. It's actually an easy business when you look at it. Okay. The toughest thing is your success blocker. You got that two voices there. Go with the voice that says work out. Read a book, positive. Listen to motivational speakers. Learn about my product. That's voice. Over here, no, let's watch TV. Come on, let's have a cheeseburger. Come on, let's have fried chicken. Come on, let's just sit in front of the TV all night. You got those two voices. We all got them. No, some of us have three. I can't help you with that. <laughs> okay? But you got to start thinking about what you're thinking about. Let me see. Is this worthwhile to think about? No, I got to get rid of it. That doesn't do me any good. I don't need to worry about this anymore. I don't need to worry about him anymore. I don't need to worry about her anymore. And as Les Brown puts it out there, you know what Les Brown says? It's none of my business what people think about me. It's none of my business what people think about me. I don't care what people think about me. They can think anything they want. It's none of my business. It's none of my business. Does that make sense, Evan? Yes. At Lex? Yes. Right? We're always worried about what people think. Who cares what they think? What does that have to do with your success? What does it have to do with your success? Yourself. Huh? Yourself. Yeah. So it doesn't matter what people think. Now, if you're an idiot and doing things wrong, obviously people are going to talk about you. But you're on your way to financial freedom. That's what this is all about. Financial freedom. There's nothing better than having financial freedom. Now, people ask, does money make you happy? Most people say, yes, it does. It really doesn't make you happy, money. 
It's what the money does. It's the choices money gives you, the options, what you can do for family or friends. That's what money makes you happy, okay? We got some outstanding people that money didn't make them happy, and they had everything you could possibly want. And that person wanted a person be Michael Jackson. He had everything. Lex, he had everything, didn't he? He had money, he had fame, he had houses, all. he had everything. But he needed to inject himself with drugs. Robin Williams, Prince, right? What's the other girl's name? Whitney Houston, right? Greatest singing voice around. Cocaine and alcohol. They had everything we could possibly want, but they didn't have themselves. Everybody get that? They didn't love themselves. When you love yourself, you're not going to abuse yourself. Mm -hmm. But when you don't love yourself, you're going to look for anything to alter the way you are. We had great artists. These people are great artists. Michael Jackson's music, I love his music. Positive, powerful. Oh, Whitney Houston, unbelievable voice. And she took her away from us because she needed the cocaine and the alcohol. So understand, money, money is important. It's like oxygen. We need it. And we need it so we can live good, so we can take care of our family and our friends or whatever the case may be. That's why we need it. And that's why you're here. But you're only going to get this if you understand what I'm trying to say to you. Is get rid of the junk that you're thinking about. Get rid of the stuff that's happened in childhood. It's over. It's done. Forget about that relationship. Forget about it. Forget about that job you had that you got fired. Forget about it. You are here. It's a blessing that you're here. A lot of people we interviewed. A lot of people. And we picked you. So why do we pick you? Because there's something inside you. Didn't even have to have a long interview. You just heard there's something inside you. So your success blocker is really important. You got to understand what's blocking you. And what's blocking you is your thinking. That six inches, for some reason, that six, six inches has downloaded all the negativity in your life. It's downloaded. And it goes right to this voice. <laughs> See, you can't do that. Remember you lost that job? Uh, you're not good enough. She don't love you. He don't love you. It'll never work. Mine never had two parents. My father was abusive. It, it doesn't belong to you anymore. It belongs to the past. <clears throat> and that's why this program is successful. If you get that, you get that, it changes everything. <clears throat> so these next four days, I'm going to tell you, you better minimize your TV watching. You're going to get exercises. You're going to get homework. Okay? We're going to pass you out a workbook. We had a guy come in a couple weeks ago. He goes, I forgot my book. I said, what do you mean you forgot it? He goes, I left it at home. He said, you want me to go get it? I said, I don't care what you do. Just go. You're done. We're done. We're giving you a workbook. You don't even pay for it. We're giving you a workbook, which is like your Bible right now, and you left it home. How serious was he about the car business? Not very serious, right? So we're going to scrutinize you. We're going to push you. All right? Especially if we know you have it, we're going to force you to get it out. But we all need to be a team. This is all a team. It's not one against one. We're all a team right here. We've got a lot of stuff to go through. Be on board with it. Are you on board? Of course. Yes. Are you on board? Yes. Are you on board? Yes, sir. Are you on board? Absolutely. Bring my razor tomorrow. I'll take care of that for you, okay? <laughs> <laughs> on board? You know why you're here, right? Yes. Oh, my God. I need another yes. ball guy here. <laughs> <laughs> you on board? I am on board. Lex, you on board? Absolutely. That's what, see, his head? I needed two. <laughs> All right, two and a half. Two and a half. <laughs> on board? Before Elon came here, sir. Huh? I was on board before Elon got here. You were on board before I got here. Well, I, after that speech, I'm definitely on board. You're on board, huh? You on board? Absolutely, sir. On board? I am. You on board, yeah? Oh, we're great for the lovely lady today, huh? <laughs> <laughs> we're for you, huh? We're glad for you over here. No, I'm very She's thank you. She's a flight attendant. <laughs> Thank you. you know, we think flight attendants have an easy job. We yeah, I usually see people <laughs> they get spit on, they get yelled at. It's amazing being a flight attendant, right? Thank you on board? Yes, sir. Okay, give it everything you got, right? Everything you got. Fair enough? Yeah. In front of you, it says 10 things, what? What does that say? To let go of to be happy. <clears throat> 10 things to let go of to be happy. 10 things to let go of to be happy. 10 things. Edward, what's the first one? Let go of toxic people in your life. Let go of toxic people in your life. <laughs> I took my jacket off the microphone, brother. 
Everybody say hello to Nick. Hey, Nick. Hey, hey, everybody, leave the All right, say that first one again. Who said it? Edward. 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 Say, say it again. Yes. Let go of toxic people in your life. Let go of toxic. Anybody got any toxic people in their life? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Sometimes it's family members. Yeah. yeah. Right? You have to understand, you got to make a big paradigm shift. There's a big shift that you got to make in your life right now. <clears throat> and you got to say, wait a minute, hold on. Whoa. Yeah, you're negative all the time. Yeah. Do me a favor, Edwin. Heard enough. Goodbye. Okay? <laughs> You gotta draw the line, the line in the sand. You cannot have toxic people around you. Family members are tough. You, you can't get rid of, you can't kill them, right? But you can spend less time with them. Friends, less time with them. If they're not looking, if they're not motivating you and they're not on a track to reach their goals, you don't wanna be with them. See, a lot of these are gonna tell people that, hey, you get in the car business. You know what they're gonna say to you? Car business, oh my God. You want to those people? They're going to teach you how to lie and cheat? <laughs> that person doesn't make a lot of money. Get away from them. You don't want people that are negative in your life. It's real simple. Felipe, number two. Let go of the need to be right. Let go of the need to be right. Everybody wants to be right. They want to argue with you until you go, okay, you're right. Let go of the need to be What do you want to be right or do you want to be happy? Happy. Right. Okay, I had this conversation with somebody the other night. You want to be right or you want to be happy? You got your opinion, I got my opinion. I respect your opinion, expect my opinion. Oh, no, no, you need to believe this. No, I'm not believing that. Okay? <laughs> See, people would rather fight than be happy. John, what's the next one? Let go of the need to impress others. Yeah. <clears throat> Guys, we have a problem with this, don't we? I was trying to impress, especially when there's chicks around. I was trying to impress the chicks, right? When you try to impress somebody and they like you, they don't know you. They only know what you're putting out there. That's all. It's not you. It's what they think. See, a long time ago, I was a real hot dog. I was a real hot dog. I lived in downtown Miami. I lived in a high rise, kind of in a penthouse, overlooking Biscayne Bay. I was running a Chevrolet store, driving brand new Corvette convertibles every three months. Nice. And I'd pull in, I'd call them up in the morning, go, yeah, bring my Corvette up and drop the top. And I'd walk through the lobby thinking, yeah, look at me, man. Am I cool or what, right? <laughs> People really liked me. But they didn't know inside was full of pain. Inside was full of not peaceful. They didn't know me. So don't try to impress. Be yourself. See, you're going to like me for me, not who you think I am. Okay? Like yourself. Fall in love with yourself. Don't worry about that. What's the next one, Martin? Let go limiting beliefs. Limiting beliefs. Oh, I'll never make $100,000. You're right, you won't, because you said you won't. Okay, simple. It's really simple, right? Limiting beliefs. Limiting Who knows? Somebody in this room is going to invent something. Somebody in this room could be on Shark Tank in a year or two. Somebody could be writing an unbelievable book, inventing something, whatever it might be. It's possible. Can everybody say it's possible? It's possible. It's possible. Say it one more time. It's, it's possible. possible. It's possible. But you've got to believe that it's possible. If you say, well, you know, my family never made a lot of money. My, my dad never made a lot of money. In fact, nobody ever went to college. You might. So what? Who cares? It's possible. Some of the richest people in the world do not have a college education. Some of the richest people in the world do not have a high school education. Some of the richest people in the world. It's possible. But it's not going to happen unless you go to work. Okay? It's a paradigm shift. Think differently, act differently, and speak before you say something. And that's something, that's a tool you're going to hear me say a lot. Before you say something to a customer or somebody, if you just think about it, you might say, whoa, I better not say that one. That one doesn't work. Okay? Think about what you're going to say. Let your brain tell your mouth what to say. But most people have a mouth problem. Their brain says, I didn't tell you to say that. And they want to go on and on. Guy sat in my office the other day. He said, you're going to want to hire me. I said, really? I said, why? He says, I got the gift of gab. I said, really? I said, well, I don't want to hire you. He said, why not? Because I want the gift of hearing, not this. We have to listen to our customers. We have to listen, not this. We have to listen. Years ago, it was all about that. Not anymore. What's the next one, Fred? Let go of gossip and complaining. Yeah. Gossip and complaining. 
There's groups out there, gossip groups. Come on, join us. Come on, let's complain about everything. Let's complain about the world. Let's complain about the president. Let's complain about everything, okay? Get away from that, it's junk. Who wants to hear that stuff? Stop complaining. Because if you complain, then you're stuck. Gossiping. You don't need to tell people from somebody else. How about somebody says, listen, I got a secret, I'm gonna tell you, but you can't tell anybody. Well, that, I promised that person I wouldn't tell anybody, but yet, now I wanna tell them, why? Because we think we have to. All right, what's the next one? Let go of regretting past mistakes. Anybody ever make mistakes? <laughs> okay. We've made mistakes. Hopefully we learn from them, right? I like to use the term failure is a fertilizer for success. Ooh. Failure is a fertilizer for success. You have to fail. That's how you learn. Now, if you keep failing over and over again, then you're an idiot. <laughs> Real simple. But failure is a plus. What did I learn? When you fail, what did I learn from that? What did I, what could I have done right? What did I do wrong? Failure. For, now we want to fail forward. You're going to fail, get up, wipe yourself off. But most people fail and they give up. That's failing. You don't fail as long as you get up one more time. And you'll see a clip in the next couple of days. It's from, it's a classic clip from Rocky Balboa. Okay. And as he says, nothing hits harder than life. Life will knock you to your knees. Life will knock you to your knees. He goes, it's not how hard you hit, it's how hard you can get hit and keep moving forward. That's how win is done. And for some of us, life has hit us. Life has hit us hard. Some of these guys came from another country by yourself. Met more people recently, came over here by themselves. Wow, that's pretty strong. Leaving your family coming thousands of miles away. It's not how hard you hit, it's how hard you can get hit and keep moving forward. That's how winning is done. You're gonna get knocked down, get back up again. Get back up again. Kids, what's the next one? Let go of feeling sorry for yourself. Huh? Let go of feeling sorry for yourself. Let go of feeling sorry for myself. Poor me, poor me, poor me. If you keep thinking about poor me, you're gonna be stuck with poor me. You're gonna be stuck with poor me. It's really that simple, right? Stop being poor me. Start saying, you know what, there's more I want out of life. I'm willing to do whatever it takes to get what I never had. To get what you never had, you're going to have to do what you never did. It's real simple. If you never made $50,000 a year, you're going to have to work harder. If you want to make seventy five, dollars you want to make one hundred. dollars There is a dealership out there that totally amazed me. There's five people selling cars, five salespeople. Blew me away. Those five salespeople make over $200,000 a year selling cars. $200,000 a year. Five salespeople at this one dealership. And I remember the manager said to one of them, hey, you want me to promote you to manager? He goes, nope, <laughs> don't want to do that. No, 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 I don't need that pressure, right? 200,000. His friend, his first year we trade him, 74,000. So your first year is 50 to 70, if you're willing to do whatever it takes. And the greatest things about it is we're a phone call away. Okay, we're a phone call away to help you with any situation. Fred, what's the next one? What number is that? Eight. Eight. Let go of negative self-talk. Negative self-talk. I can't do it. You're right, you can't do it. You can't do it. We're gonna have something that Henry Ford said. Whether you think you can or you think you can't, you're right. All right, two people are ready to climb a mountain. Mountain climbers, big, big, big mountain. The one goes, I don't know, man, that's pretty tough. I don't know if I'm gonna make it. He's already done. He shouldn't even climb. And the other one says, yeah, it is high, but can you imagine what it's like getting on top, being on top of that mountain? You understand that? When I was a young man at 17, 18 years old, and I graduated high school, I got on a motorcycle and traveled all over the country. Sleeping bag, the whole nine yards, sleeping wherever, sleeping by lakes, washing in restrooms, okay? And one of my goals was to go to the top of Pikes Peak in Colorado. Pikes Peak, that's where they used to race cars and all that. I used to always be in the motorcycles. And going up to Pikes Peak, it was a summer day. It was nice, it was great. Going to Pikes Peak, it starts getting cold. Pull over, put a jacket on. Going up a little higher, all of a sudden we're getting hailstone storm. I can't believe it. It's like ice, ice cubes, big ice cubes, beating us up. We finally get up to the very top of Pikes Peak, and what was up there? Nothing! <laughs> nothing! It was nothing! It was like, but 
when I make time speak. You understand? It's so important that limiting beliefs, if you don't do anything, if you go home and watch TV tonight, you go home and eat junk food and do nothing and not read, okay? Guess what? Nothing's going to change. No change, no change. Real simple, right? Mm -hmm. If you don't change anything, why would it? Now, let's say you go to the gym three times a week for an hour. Three times for a week. You go to the gym for an hour, work out really hard. What's going to happen? Uh, slight improvement. Yeah. You're going to start going, You're going to start looking at the mirror. <laughs> right? But if you, if you talk about going to the gym, you never go to the gym, what's going to happen? <laughs> no, nothing. Nothing. Okay? You have to get out of your comfort zone. Don't be here for a job. Be here for an adventure and a career. Okay? Evan, what's the next one? The go of the need to please everyone. Yeah, stop trying to please everybody. We always try to please people. Whether you know it or not, it's a character defect. Trying to please people. Why? Because people that try to please people, I'm going to write, hey, let me do something for George over here. You guys see what I'm doing for him? I'm a nice guy. Oh, I'm a nice guy, right? See, we're always trying to please people. Please yourself. I learned a great lesson from somebody. After me, you're first. Mm. After me, you're first. Think about that. I'm going to take care of my feelings. So, you know, oh, I don't want to say that to them. It's going to hurt their feelings. Well, wait a minute. Now, what about your feelings? How do you feel? How do you feel? Take care of the way you feel. If you're telling somebody the truth and it's going to hurt their feelings, and it's the truth, you might as well let it out. But if you lie to them, you're not taking care of your feelings because you're lying. Got it? Matthew, what's the next one? The next one is let go of worrying about the future. That's a great one. We're always worried about the future. So here we are today. And it's the future, right? Oh, boy, I'm going to get that future. Tomorrow. What that, that future is, wait a minute, I'm going to get the future. Hold on a second. Tomorrow. I can't get the future. You know why? Because we have it all screwed up. The future is now. Yeah. Today's the future. Yeah. We're always looking at the future out there. This is the future. I don't know why people keep telling the future. The future is right now. We live today, right now. This is the future. Get that in our heads. If we do something great today, we work really hard, tomorrow could be pretty good if we work really hard. But the future is right now. Forgiveness is right now. Good. It's all about now. It's all about now. It's all about now. Sure, what's the last, the last one? That was the last one. Huh? That was Oh, okay. See that? So, do they all make sense? Absolutely. Of course. Okay? You, you got to have a paradigm shift. Or you really, it's not going to work. You're going to work two weeks, you're going to quit. You're going to give up. You have to have a paradigm shift. You got to change the way you think. It's time to change the way you think. Because if you don't, you're going to get the same results as you've been getting. And I don't know, if you like the results you've been getting? Not really, you wouldn't be here, would you? Right? Right. Okay? So, are we in the right place? Yes. Yes. We're ready to rock and roll? Yes. Huh? A bit. Now, we're going to take breaks. Again, if you're one minute late, you got to come up and sing. If you can't sing, you can leave. Now, some of you might be late, go, oh, I, I can't sing, and you'll actually leave. And you'll let that voice over there control you. See, this voice, you know, you can call it God and the devil plus and negative. You can call it whatever you want. But there's two voices in every one of us. There's two voices in every one of us. We have these two voices. The voice that says we can do it, the voice that says we can't. Okay? You've got to feed this one. Mm -hmm. See, this one says, if you work out, I promise you'll feel better. If you don't eat that fried chicken and have a nice big salad with, ch with chicken on it, you're going to feel better. If you read this book, you're going to feel better. If you listen to motivational speakers, you're going to feel better. This one says, I don't want to watch motivational speakers. I want to watch TV. I want to eat fried chicken. After I eat fried chicken, I want to bring a pint of Ben and Jerry's in front of the TV. <laughs> See, I can't bring a pint of Jerry, Ben and Jerry's to the TV. Because if I bring a pint of Jerry's and I start eating it, oh, you know what, I better, should put it away, right? I ate half of it. Well, well, there's not that much left. I might as well finish it. And then we finish it. And then we feel that Crap. sugar bomb right yeah. here. And then we're like, I can't believe I did that. Yeah. I can't believe I ate that ice cream, right? Because this, you didn't listen to this one. This one said, take, 
Take all ice cream, put it in a bowl, and put the rest in the refrigerator. That's what this one said. This one says, bring it to the front of the TV. <laughs> this one says, you want some potato chips? Put some potato chips in a bowl. This one says, bring the whole bag to the TV. <laughs> if we just think about what we're going to do or say before we do it, you'll be surprised what you're going to learn if you do that. You with me? Everybody good? Yes. Yeah. All right. That clock up there says... Two, Somebody's five. quarter to three. Are you with me? You have to stand up a second. So, we're going to take a 15 minute break. When you go down the steps, to your right is not a cafeteria, there's vending machines down here. You want vending machines, right? You want to bring your lunch, we have a little refrigerator here tomorrow if you want to bring your lunch. Okay? Alright? So, we're going to be back here in 15 minutes, right? 15 minutes. But before we go, we must tell ourselves that we have that we have fire in the belly. Fire, fire in the belly. Mm -hmm. See, when you got fire in the belly, nothing can stop you. Because it's saying, I don't want to watch TV, I want to go and run. I want to exercise. I don't want to sit and watch TV. When you have fire in the belly. So on the count of three, if everybody gives it to me from the bottom of their stomach, we start a 15 minute break. Are we ready? One. Two, three. Fire in the belly! Oh, I like that. I can do that one more time. One more time. A little louder. A little louder. Fire in the belly. Are you ready? Yeah. Can't do it. Your hands in your pocket. Take some of your energy. Get your hands out here, right? Okay? Ready? Ready? One, two, three. Fire in the belly! 15 minutes. Let's go. Maestro, turn it up.